Uh, I made some changes in the vacuum system. The vacuum pump is actually off right now. So what you're seeing is, uh, let's see, 12 volts input, 3.08 amps. Oh, I guess I'm in manual focus. Uh, okay. And uh, as you can see, well, that's that that right there is a glare spot. So I'm going to try to block that. Well, I'll just turn off the light. How about that? Okay. So you you can see uh, anode tufting. Uh, the uh, pixels in the screen lighting up, and you can see the cathode glow starting to recede a little bit there, which means that uh, there's a slow leak. So now what I'm going to do is uh, turn the vacuum pump back on, uh, if I can reach it, and open the valve. Okay, so now we're pulling air out of the system again. So you can see very quickly the glow the cathode glow completed and now I think you can see that the cathode glow is expanding the little tube the blue purple tube is expanding and uh, there's another you can't quite see it yet on the screen but there's a pinkish tube now directly enveloping the copper tube and then there's a purple layer on the outside of that uh, and the anode tufting has almost completely gone away. There's still a little scintillation there, lightning storms. Doesn't that look exactly like uh, undercloud lightning as seen from outer space? Uh, but there's no, none of that pronounced anode tufting except over there on the back side there's one plume of anode tufting. I guess you can see that the blue corona glow is almost completely filling the chamber now. And uh, on the camera screen it looks like there's a, a white layer uh, enveloping the copper anode tube. Uh, to my vision, that's actually kind of an orangish pink. And then it gradates out uh, through purple, and then finally to uh, blue uh, in the remaining atmosphere of the dome. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the... And notice that the anode tufting has gone, except for that one right there. So now I'm going to close the valve again to the vacuum pump. It's kind of a stretch. Here. All right, valve is closed and pump is off. So now you can see that my vacuum system is quite a bit tighter. I don't have the that huge rapid leak that I had before, but you can see the process is happening in reverse. The overall blue glow is shrinking back to the cathode. That anode tufting is starting to reappear on the back side of the anode. Up, oh, anode tufting. Boom, just sort of came into appearance there. And the lightning storm happening. And the generalized blue glow is shrunk back to the cathode. And it'll stay in this stage for a few minutes. And then the cathode glow will slowly start to recede. I have not yet allowed it to go to the point of actually developing a power arc uh, yet with this good vacuum system. Because I think that that power arc would persist for too long. I don't want to take the chance of overheating the glass of the chamber. 
really don't want to do that. Um, okay. Now there are a few grid pixels starting to show up as the pressure uh, goes up inside the chamber from the inevitable tiny little leaks. And uh, pronounced anode tufting happening and increasing. Side view. All right, so I think uh, from this you can tell that my uh, really radically severe leaks are gone. Uh, we can hold a reasonable vacuum for a fair amount of time and we're pulling down to a lower pressure. Uh, and again, at uh, every step in pressure, interesting things happen or stop happening. Okay, I'm going to start the vacuum pump again and open the valve. There's the cathode plasma torus growing and expanding and the changing character. Anode tufting going away. Lightning storms. On the anode. Cathode glow expanding to fill the whole chamber. That uh, ripplyness up there at the top, that's in the glass of the chamber. That ripply distortion. And this little spot down on the lower right there, that's a reflection from my desk lamp. Down there and block it with my hand. Okay, lightning storm is going away on the anode, and we just have that one pronounced area of anode tuft down around on the back side there. That's probably coming from a surface imperfection. A few more little lightning flashes there. And the purple glow has pretty much filled the chamber. Um, a quick temperature check. My capacitors are running a bit warm. I don't want to blow out another flyback transformer. But I'm going to briefly take the voltage up to 18 volts. Okay, here we go. That's 18. Shall we try 24 for a moment? Oh, man. 24 volts. Man, that thing is glowing. There's absolutely no anode tufting except for a tiny area on the back that's actually decreased. Okay, dropping the power. Back down to 12. Let's go as low as we can go. That, believe it or not, is 5.6 volts. At one point, nope, now here we're, yeah, 5.5 volts, 1.31 amps and we still have a great cathode glow there and a little bit of anode tuft. Okay, MOSFETs really heat up at this low switching voltage so I'm going to take it back up to 12 volts and about three and a third amps Okay, switching off. Thanks for watching.
Thank you.